Hi everyone. Well, we're on. Um, this is Samantha Mora. I'm with EdTech Teacher, and we are uh, going to be starting our webinar today on uh, language learning and iPads and all sorts of great things. We are lucky enough to have with us um, our uh, speaker today is Joe Dale, all the way from England. Thank you for joining us, Joe. And why don't you just jump right in and tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, well, I'd absolutely love to. Thanks ever so much, uh, Sam, for introducing me then. I'm very grateful to uh, EdTech Teacher for giving me the opportunity to uh, give this presentation today as part of the, uh, as part of the spring uh, series of webinars. It's fantastic. I'm just going to start sharing my screen, if that's okay. I'm hoping everyone can see the screen um, okay. So uh, just to give you a little bit of background, um, I was a languages teacher for 13 years, uh, teaching French at secondary level and at uh, middle school level, so 9 to 13-year-olds. Um, so the uh, the last 10 years of my of my teaching career, I was teaching on the Isle of Wight, which is where I still live. So those people that don't know where that is, it's an island uh, about 25 minutes via ferry um, from the south of England, near Southampton, uh, Portsmouth area. And um, today I'm going to talk about how the uh, a language community in uh, in the UK called the MFL Twitterati, MFL stands for Modern Foreign Languages, by the way, if you were wondering. Um, started about 2008 or so and the influence they're having now um, around the world and particularly in relation to sharing good ideas, sharing good practice and supporting each other and obviously as it's EdTech Teach we're talking about iPads and uh, there'll be lots and lots of examples of how iPads are being used by the MFL Twitterati um, in different classrooms uh, all over the country so I hope you find it useful and uh, we'll make a start about now so as you can see my uh, blog address is underneath the avatar that I've been using since about 2006 now so that's jodel.typepad.com um, I've not had an opportunity to update it a lot recently the uh, the last post was sort of the middle of last year unfortunately but there is a a post back in um, January of last year which was another webinar for the Classroom uh, 2.0 Live American webinar series um, which you can check out all about iPads and learning some of the slides are repeated here as well and uh, my email address is underneath that joedell at talk21.com um, so get in touch if you'd like to after today's presentation if you enjoy what you see and I'm just joedell on Twitter so very easy to find uh, in that way so let's make a start so this first slide um, I was lucky enough to go to the uh, iPad Summit USA and I actually met uh, Richard Wells uh, who if you don't know is iPad Wells on Twitter he's from the UK like myself uh, but he's currently living in New Zealand and he wrote a blog post um, about well his, his whole um, website iPad for schools is a fantastic treasure trove for ideas on using iPads but I particularly like um, like this blog post that he published in February uh, of this year talking about the salmon model and how it's all about um, essentially how it's all about growth mindset, uh, which is the work of Carol, uh, Professor Carol Dweck, not about the technology, which is something which I really, I really agreed with, and that's why I put this at the beginning of the presentation because I think that being part of a social media community is one way of encouraging uh, growth mindset. In other words, for those people that don't, don't know about growth mindset, it's uh, essentially the idea is. Um, is having this sort of a go for it attitude, not having what is referred to as a fixed mindset, whereby you know you want to be critical of everything, you don't want to try anything out, but having a growth mindset means you want to give things a go, you want to try things out, and I think that's really really important. My old head teacher used, used a similar idea, talking about um, drains and radiators. So if you like uh, radiators, in other words, a uh, a member of staff in the in the staff room, if they're a radiator, they're very positive, they're very encouraging. Uh, because they have a growth mindset, whereas whereas a drain is someone that just wants to be negative about, about everything and not want to try things out at all. So that's why I've, I've put that particular slide in there to start off with, because I think that being part of a social media community is an amazing way of encouraging a growth mindset. And you'll see that on the right-hand side is um, a post by Vicky Davis uh, critiquing um, uh, Richard's uh, original article. So um, I think that's a really good starting point. So now we're going to drill down into exactly what the MFL Twitterati is. So it's a community of language teachers, language professionals, uh, language organizations, language consultants um, who are based in the UK who like to share ideas literally on a daily basis. Uh, in fact, if you do a search for my list called MFL Twitterers, that's the word Twitter with E-R-S on the end, then you'll see that there are over a thousand members of this particular list and that is, I suppose, the physical embodiment of what the MFL Twitterati is all about and you can see what they're tweeting about right now if you if you fancy so about 2008 
um, which was really when the community started. I organized um, a conference uh, called the Isle of Wight Conference 2006 to 2008 and the idea of that was to encourage people to come along uh, who are interested in uh, technology, who are language teachers and then Twitter started about 2007 and so that community started to grow and grow and it was particularly in 2008 when we started tweeting a lot and talking about the different sessions that people were going to and, and what have you. Um, and then I organized, helped to organize another event uh, in Southampton near to where I live called um, the ICT and Languages Conference, so I'm going to talk about that more later and that's when it really, really took off. So again, do a search for MFL Twitterati and you'll find out um, all about the, uh, the community. Okay, so back in uh, 2011, uh, at the first ICT and Languages Conference, I gave a keynote talk um, about about the MFL Twitterati. It was called The Rise and the Rise of the MFL Twitterati. If you build it, they will come. And as part of that, I wanted to do a bit of crowdsourcing beforehand to see um, what the MFL Twitterati means, meant to the people who were part of it at the time. And um, what I did was all the tweets that people replied to, to that question, what does the MFL Twitterati mean to you, um, I put them all into Wordle, and those people that know about Wordle will know that the, the more high frequency a word is in Wordle, the bigger it will be. And as you can see, the largest word on the screen right now is the word support, which I think is really, really fantastic and goes back to this idea of growth mindset. So um, it was very, very, it was beautiful in lots of ways to see the fact that the biggest word in the world was support. So what um, is most important to the language teachers who are part of this community is support. It's not about you know, geeky teachers talking about geeky things, it's about support. And from that basis, from that starting point, anything is possible. Uh, so talking about iPads, methodology, anything at all. iPads is, you know, is one thing that we like to talk about at the moment, but it, we could be talking about the flipped classroom and, and, and various other things that are happening in the world of languages and technology. Now, if you'd like to find out more about the community in particular, I wrote an article uh, for the Guardian Teacher Network back in February of last year, uh, which, which talks not only about the roots of the, uh, of the MFL Twitter article, but also about the impact uh, in the classroom from all the people who are part of the community, but I'm going to talk about that more um, right now. Now, in um, uh, 2013, in January, I did a, a podcast interview with um, two guys, um, John Johnson and uh, David Noble, who run the EduTalk um, uh, a podcast um, series, uh, which is a fantastically interesting. It's just a, a host of um, audio files all about education. Not only do they have interviews on there, but people can submit their own audio contributions. And I did a, an hour-long interview with um, David and John talking about uh, the use of technology in languages and, um, and in particular the MFL Twitterati. And so, if, again, if you want to find out more about um, this, whole, uh, this whole community, then that would be a great starting point. Now, on the right-hand side here, you'll notice there's um, reference to um, NACE, which is a, a national organization uh, for computing in the UK, and they have awards every year called the Impact Awards, and I was actually nominated for uh, the Curriculum Support Service Impact Award. Um, I, didn't, I didn't win it, but it's all about taking part, obviously. And um, as, part of my, as part of my work as an, as an independent languages consultant, um, I've been actively building, as it says here, actively building a global community of language teachers with blogging, podcasting, video conferencing and Twitter to enhance language learning. So that was really fantastic and as part of that I had to provide evidence um, of the impact of um, the MFL Twitterati was having on uh, pupil attainment, motivation and creativity. And as you can see the tweet bottom uh, right there was the, was the question that I asked when I uh, needed to gather this evidence. And so, as you can see on the next page, this is another Wordle uh, which uh, shows all the replies that I received back and I put them into this um, cloud um, generating tool and again you can see that the most important words here are words like students, which is clearly fantastic, uh, that the biggest impact is on the students, on new ideas, uh, on things getting better, on people being motivated, again going back to the growth mindset ideal. So that was, that was really brilliant and I was very pleased with, uh, with the response. Okay, now again I took the, the different tweets and I condensed them down into these bullet points and obviously I'm not going to read out all of these now but I just want to pick up on the, uh, the one which is second from the bottom which as you can see says the, the language teachers involved uh, in the MFL Twitterati feel that they are delivering more engaging and effective lessons by trying out new strategies which in turn are motivating their pupils, improving attainment and encouraging them to produce more creative outcomes. 
So this is really, really inspiring. And yes, that's that's to do with 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 the use of iPads as one uh, one example of of uh, how the sorts of things that we're doing in our lessons at the moment. But I think that it's really it's really amazing that for free, particularly in the present term. Um, economic climate we find ourselves in in the UK and, and around the world in lots of ways that uh, people can draw on this amazing community and get this amazing support and advice absolutely for free okay now the the impact of the of the MFL Twitter RT is not uh, is not only uh, confined to the UK it's actually gone global and it has ha it has gone global for the last few years uh, in fact if you do a search for the MFL Twitter RT hashtag on Twitter, you'll notice that it's being used by language teachers from all over the world, which again is something which uh, I'm personally very proud of, and it's taken a lot of effort to, to achieve that. But you'll notice in this particular slide um, that there are two uh, blog posts, uh, one written by a Canadian uh, language teacher and one written by um, a US language teacher, referring to the MFL Twitterati um, and, and the fact that you can use hashtags like MFL Twitterati to, to have um, discussions on Twitter with language teachers as well as the, uh, the popular LangChat one as well. You notice as well that on lots of these slides there are links to the, uh, to the presentation, sorry, links to the, the different websites I'm referring to and on the penultimate slide in the presentation uh, there's going to be a QR code and a URL uh, linking to a PDF download of the whole presentation. So if you want to check out this uh, in your own time, then you can do that very, very easily. Okay, now I, I appreciate that not not everybody is into the idea of being on Twitter and that uh, possibly you feel it's something that is not for you. And so um, I came up with the idea of using the website called Paperly or paper.li and I created a Twitter, um, a Twitter uh, account called MFL Times and encourage people in the MFL Twitter art as well as people from around the world who are also interested in languages to um, to to, uh, to follow that account and and what some um, paper.li does is it generates a daily newspaper made up of the links in the tweets that people are tweeting who are following a particular account and um, what started started off as an experiment has now turned into a really valuable resource that every day uh, you get this sort of Twitter-like experience without having, without having to be on Twitter. You get this opportunity to to experience interesting stories to do with languages. As you can see, the, the screenshot in front of you is literally taken from today. So there was a, an article in The Guardian, um, the UK uh, national newspaper, talking about language learning, what motivates us. And the reason that's appeared um, as the lead story is because it's been tweeted many times by people who are part of the uh, of the community following this particular Twitter account. So it's a really fantastic way of getting a twi Twitter-like experience and uh, without having to be on Twitter, because I appreciate that it's, it's not for everybody. So again, you can check that out and, and, and have a look at that. And, and if you subscribe, as you can see on the right-hand side there, you can subscribe and get an email every time the new issue comes out every day. So uh, some people have described this as, um, as you know, an opportunity to, to find one gem every single day um, by reading the MFL Times. So it's well worth uh, checking out. Okay, now something that we've found has been very, very successful in the UK uh, for sharing resources is having our own um, drop boxes. So this started off, this was an idea from Amanda Salt, who is the head of Spanish uh, at Grosvenor Grammar School in Belfast. And she came up with the idea of creating a drop box that she would then um, encourage other people to, to, to join. So uh, through inviting people, um, we could all have a, a collaborative Dropbox, but it became very full very quickly, it used up the space very quickly uh, because there were so many people that wanted to share ideas and therefore as a result of that uh, we then created other Dropboxes uh, for each language. Uh, so there's ones for French, Spanish, German, Italian, etc. And there's other um, Dropboxes for things like uh, this uh, exam system we have in England called controlled assessments, which lots of people like to share ideas on. So we have that, um, uh, we have that uh, Dropbox for that as well. And it's proven very, very useful. Um, this, I, th I believe, the last time I heard, there were over 250, 300 people who are members of the different drop boxes. Um, the only issue has been that uh, some people don't realise if they delete a file from their uh, their folder that they're sharing in the drop box, it deletes it for everybody else. So on occasions, we've had 1,500 uh, files being deleted suddenly, and then very kind people uh, putting them back, restoring them to, so that um, the status quo is, is restored as it were, but in general they, they've proved really, really useful. Now, if you wanted to, to join this Dropbox and you weren't from the UK, unfortunately the answer would be that you can't because um, to make it manageable for the reason I've just described, 
what we're, what we're doing is we're encouraging people to replicate the same model in other countries rather than uh, that, than being able to join us because uh, otherwise it would just become absolutely unmanageable. But um, certainly having a, a collaborative Dropbox has been a very good way of uh, of, of uh, harnessing the the interest in sharing resources um, in the social media community in this context, but it would work in in lots of other in lots of other uh, communities as well. I'm sure in the same way. Now, back in May of last year, um, I wrote an article again for the Guardian, um, talking about the idea. You know, are language teachers leading the way with educational technology? Now, what I meant by that was that um, through the MFL Twitter RT, through all this sharing in the UK, I I would argue that. Um, there isn't a similar, there isn't there isn't the same sort of community anywhere in the world, uh, certainly amongst language teachers. Um, and I would say I know that there are other, you know, big big communities, people interested in iPads, people who are in the ELT community, for example, so English uh, as uh, as a second language. But that that sort of uh, dynamic, uh, coherent, cohesive group, I don't think there's anything uh, like that anywhere else in the world. So I would argue. Um, that we are leading the way in that sense, in that sort of community-driven um, way, which is again something which I find very, very exciting. Now, you might, be, if you're interested in, you know, in, in learning how to join the MFL Twitter RT, what you can do is you can do a search for the uh, MFL Twitterers list, which I mentioned um, towards the beginning of this presentation, and you'll find on that list which you need to access via a PC or a Mac. You can't do it at the moment. Um, on, a, on, a, on an iPad or any other mobile device as far as I'm aware. Please prove me wrong if that is the case, but my understanding is that you're not able to uh, subscribe to a list uh, unless you do it on a PC or a, or a Mac, uh, unless you're using possibly a different type of uh, browser such as iCab Mobile, you might be able to do it on that, but generally speaking you certainly can't do it in Safari or in, a, in an app. And so what you would do is you would subscribe to this list, which means you could follow what people are tweeting about, and if you wanted to join the list, then what you'd have to do is you'd have to ask me to put you on the list. So you'd have to follow me. I could follow you back. And then um, we normally say that uh, we encourage people to have uh, to fill in their biography to encourage people to then um, make it clear that they are language teachers from the UK. And then I'm more than happy to put people on the list. And as, as you can see, I did. I mean, I took this screenshot a while ago, but you can see that there are only over a thousand members and over a thousand subscribers. So it's a really big community now. I think anyway, all interested in talking about languages and. Uh, and technology and not and you know non-technology things as well. Now um, going back to pedagogy in particular, this is um, an article which I wanted to draw everyone's attention to called ICT is a catalyst of a change in pedagogy. And this was written by Laura Knight, who works at um, uh, Berkhamsted School in Hertfordshire, uh, who is um, uh, in the languages team, is uh, was head of languages. I think she's not head of languages at the moment, she certainly was head of languages, and she's also the director of uh, e-learning at the school. And she co-authored um, this article with Mark Steed, who is the head of the school, and it talks about the the Martini generation. Now, uh, for those people that that um, know about the the adverts that took place in the 70s and 80s about Martini, the drink Martini, it talked about uh, any time, any place, anywhere Martini. In other words, you could enjoy a Martini where, wherever you were. Now. Her, her metaphor, I mean she's not the first person that coined this, but the reason that she's using this, this um, idea in her article is to suggest that with um, mobile devices such as iPads, uh, it's now possible to have any time, any place, anywhere learning. So if a child, for example, wants to learn how to do, a, um, uh, do some sort of dance move or wants to learn how to play a certain chord, let's say, on the guitar, then they can find that out, that out independently. They can go onto YouTube, they can learn how to do that independently. They're, they're no longer... Um, restricted in any way whatsoever by uh, some sort of information gap. If, they, if they're interested in something, they want to become an expert in it, they want to improve their own skills, then they can do that whenever they want, wherever they are, with a mobile device. And that's something which is very, very exciting and certainly wasn't the case, or it wasn't as easy, let's say, um, just, you know, it was certainly when I was growing up, and, and I'm sure that's the case for many people now. So it's really, it's really interesting how things have changed. And so I think the Martini generation is definitely something that we're seeing right now. Okay, so I'm going to um, show a few exact examples about how iPads are being used in languages and sort of taking on board the idea of how the MFL Twitter RT like to share ideas and, and pinpointing particular examples. So you can see that on the left-hand side here, uh, um, there is a, a tweet by Rachel Smith, who uh, is a language teacher on the Isle of Man, who's probably watching this right now, I'd imagine. So she's probably beaming that I've just said her name, which is great. Now, literally yesterday... Um, she tweeted a picture of her students using the Make Beliefs Comics app, um, app which is a cartoon-making app, 
which has only just come out, which is very interesting. I mean, the website has been around for quite a long time, but the app has just become available, and you can see that she has shared a picture um, of her year eight students, so they are uh, 12, 13 year olds, uh, using the comic um, app uh, in Spanish. And the fact she's sharing that via Twitter, via the Emerald Twitter writing community, is, is wonderful. Now on the right hand side we have um, a tweet from Mr. Gibson and he did something a little bit different. He asked um, a, a question about um, opinions about hobbies uh, on Twitter and then encouraged the Spanish speakers who were, uh, sorry, the, well, the Spanish spe uh, speakers who are Spanish teachers in the UK to answer the, um, the questions he was answering, uh, that he was asking and then he was able to create a worksheet based on their answers in Spanish which I just thought was absolutely wonderful. So those are a few ideas to start off with about how the MFL Twitterati are sharing ideas with each other. Okay, now when I knew that um, I was going to be doing this webinar, which I was absolutely delighted about, um, I asked the question, could you send me examples of, of iPad use in uh, languages in MFL for my Etipad webinar? Um, and um, I was actually going to do this webinar um, a couple of months ago, but unfortunately, and it sounds like I'm making this up, but I, I'm absolutely not, hand on heart. Um, I um, had the, the situation whereby a junction box literally exploded uh, in the road under the ground um, just outside my house um, when I was supposed to, on the day I was supposed to be doing the webinar. And so we had no electricity for nine hours. And as a result of that, I couldn't uh, get myself ready for the, uh, <laughs> for the webinar. Now, it sounds like I've made that up, but it's absolutely true. So I emailed them. Um, uh, EdTech teacher and explain the situation and I was very grateful they, that they were able to uh, to reschedule so there you go anyway I got lots of tweets back from my initial question and as you can see on the left hand side there I use the tool Storify to uh, collect all the um, all the tweets all together or curate them as one says um, into the same place you can see that you've got the link to that Storify um, to the bottom left of this particular slide now um, a friend of mine, Carla Arena, who is a uh, is a teacher in Brazil, uses um, uses this metaphor when she talks about curating, that people who like to curate content are digital archaeologists. In other words, they are the people who are looking for the gems on the web and then pulling them all together in the same place. So I really like that term. I think it's great, and uh, I'm sure you'll find some lovely gems within that Storify. So Storify is a great tool, uh, as well as other tools such as um, Scoop It, uh, Flipboard. Um, those live binder, those sorts of things for curating content for all these digital archaeologists out there. Okay, now drilling down in particular about iPads, the uh, the three blog posts at the top here. These are by uh, Amanda Salter, I've mentioned already. Uh, then by Helena Butterfield, who's a language teacher, head of languages up in the northeast of England, and then um, Rachel Smith, who I've mentioned already. And these are uh, three people who have been blogging about their experiences of using iPads in the classroom and this whole reflection through blogging is something which is incredibly powerful. I mean I started my blog, my first blog in about 2006 and um, a lot of the people who are who I've just mentioned have been blogging for, for quite a long time, other people are a bit newer to it but I'm sure those people who have been blogging themselves know how powerful it is to be publishing your ideas to a real audience, to, to get feedback, to have a conversation uh, with people and uh, so certainly the community is, has benefited very much by individual members of the community blogging about their experiences with the use of iPads. And if you're interested in finding out about more uh, language teachers who are blogging, then the post in the middle of the uh, of the slide by uh, um, Steve Smith, who's the former head of languages at um, Ripon Grammar School in the UK and Yorkshire, his website frenchteacher.net um, has got a list of blogs, uh, mostly from the UK, but some from around the world as well, who are language teachers um, who are blogging about um, Every uh, every sort of aspect of language teaching you can imagine. So again, a great treasure trove of ideas to uh, to check out. Okay, here are some more ideas. I'm um, drilling down particularly into QR codes in this in this particular instance. So this is Rachel again, and then we have Sadie McLaughlin on the right hand side. So Rachel here is talking about using QR codes uh, to link to uh, the uh, the app called Show Me, which um, if you don't know is a screencasting app similar to Explain Everything. But the thing I like about Show Me is it allows you to publish your your screencast onto the web and have your own URL attached to that, which you can also make private if you want to by tapping on on the cog when you upload the thumbnail. Um, or sorry, upload the screencast. You tap on the cog in the thumbnail for the, each recording, and you can make your URL private. 
So what she's done, she's done a screencast for uh, describing how to form the perfect tense with avoir and the perfect tense with être, and by using QR codes on the on the that strip of paper there, she's giving her students distance learning opportunities to revise uh, using sort of like the flipped classroom model, revise this particular content uh, as many times as they feel fit. And then on the right hand side, um, Sadie McLaughlin, who's a language teacher from Wilden School in uh, in Hampshire, near Southampton, near where I live, she uh, she's used the tool Vocaroo. Uh, which uh, admittedly you can't do on the iPad. You could use a tool such as um, iPadio instead or Audioboo to create audio QR codes. But she's used Vocaroo. She's generated the QR code, which means that she has been able to um, upload uh, listening practice for her students to uh, access. So they scan the QR code either in class if they use headphones or at home, and then they, they then fill in the answers on the, on the sheet. I suppose you could use uh, Google Form as well, uh, linked to a second QR code, and then use a, um, a, a tool such as Flubaroo, that's F-L-U-B-A-R-O-O, -O, to mark it for her, which could be really cool. But um, audio QRs are another great way of using uh, QR codes, I think. And um, the little trick I used to talk about with Audioboo was if you put a, a .mp3 on the end of the URL for Audioboo, it turns it into the direct download link. So if you turn that into the QR code and you scan it, it will play the audio straight to your browser, which is really slick and, and quick and, and, and fantastic. Likewise, likewise with iPadio, you can create the audio recording in iPadio, uh, upload it, go to then the web version of iPadio, tap on the download icon, which looks like a television with an arrow pointing downwards, and then uh, copy the URL, because it will then play the audio in the browser, copy the URL and turn that into a QR code, and that's another, another way of making an audio QR code. So for languages, that's a great way of promoting listening and speaking skills. And in the case of the, of the flipped classroom with screencasting, uh, it's good for um, uh, well, listening and speaking as well, but it could be good for reading and writing also. Now, on the left-hand side here, you'll notice there's an article called Exploring the Educational Potential of QR Codes, and that's on the website Connect Learning Today. And I found out today, in fact, ironically, from the, the person who's in charge of, uh, 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 well, the editor of this particular um, website, whose name's Ken Royal, uh, that this is the most popular post on the website. So I was absolutely delighted about that, and I'm hopefully after today it'll get even more hits. So it, it describes what a QR code is and then different ways of using it within the classroom. And obviously it's, it's a no-brainer really using QR codes with uh, with iPads. And one of the uh, the links in here is uh, referring to a, a social poster website called checkthis.com. And if you go to checkthis.com forward slash VHX4, you'll find instructions on how to add what I call the QR coder, which is a, a piece of JavaScript created by Russell Tarr, who's just Russell Tarr on Twitter, also, uh, also the author of classtools.net, and that allows you to turn any, QR, any, sorry, any web page into a QR code with one tap. And in that, um, that URL I just mentioned, it tells you how you can add that favorite, uh, that, that uh, JavaScript, to your um, Safari favorites bar. So it's again, it's a very, very useful thing to do. Now on the right-hand side here, we have a tweet from Jane Johnson, who's the head of languages in the Midlands in uh, in England, and she's using the app called Crokit, which also lets you um, create an audio QR code. But for Crokit, you can only record up to 30 seconds, whereas with um, iPadio, you can upload up to a 100 megabyte file or record for up to one hour. So that's amazing. So she she's using an audio QR code to create a year seven, so that's 11, 12 year old speaking wall um, to do with um, sports. So she's got the pictures that they've created on the wall and then if you scan the QR code you can hear them talking about their pictures uh, in French which is just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Okay, this is the work of Kelda Richards now on the left hand side. She's using the app Orasma to create augmented reality. So what she's done, she has uh, created a, uh, a blog post which you'll see there, kelderrichards.wordpress.com and uh, describes how she scans a QR code um, to create the shared web link uh, with Orasma. She points it at an image, which in this case is the word art for um, the word football for example, and that then plays a video. So this is a great way of gathering um, speaking evidence through the work, through uh, video work um, in French, or it could work in any language or any subject for that matter. And she talks this uh, talks about this idea of making her walls talk, or le mieux parlant, the talking wall, which I just think is absolutely fantastic. And if you go to that blog post, 
you'll see a YouTube clip which shows her actually doing this in reality. Now, in addition to the article I mentioned on the previous page, uh, which has the same um, title as the presentation I, I'm going to talk about now, in 2011 I gave a presentation in Glasgow at the Scottish Learning Festival, uh, Teach Meet, called, again, Exploring the Educational Potential of QR Codes. And in that presentation, it will also give you some ideas on how you can use uh, QR codes in the, in the classroom. Now, the picture underneath is a picture which I took myself at another Teach Meet a couple of years ago, and that was from an exercise book by uh, the former uh, assistant head teacher at a school in Bolton, David Mitchell, who is the person behind quad blogging. If you have, haven't heard of that, I would definitely check it out. That's Q U A D B L O G G I N G, quad blogging. And he has been using QR codes in the following way. So he has uh, the, 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 he had the children creating their, their text in the exercise book. He then marked it for them, but he could have done peer assessment, I suppose, if he wanted to. But he, got, he marked it for them. They then wrote the uh, the new version, the best version, if you like, as a blog post. So, in other words, publishing the ideas to a real audience and getting the potential of real feedback from people from around the world. And then he created a QR code, which then linked that blog post to the exercise book, so you could see the original version plus the, uh, the, the 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 best version, as it were. And he talks about this idea of making your exercise books 4D. In other words, the fourth dimension, the extra dimension. Is going is is the is the fact that you're going from the physical to the virtual, and I just think that's a great idea. So why not use QR codes, for example, in that way? And again, that would work very very well with uh, with iPads if you had iPads in the classroom. Okay. Now another idea in languages, uh, in the use of iPads and QR codes, is this. Now a friend of mine, um, Alex Blagona, who is the director of the language college at um, Northgate High School in Ipswich in England, uh, on the east uh, coast of uh, east side of England. He was doing the traditional um, uh, type of activity whereby he was getting the children to describe how to form the perfect tense again using pen and paper in their exercise book. He then created a, a QR code which linked to a, um, a YouTube clip from another language department who were describing how to form the perfect tense in, a, in, a, you know, in an interesting, engaging way. So in other words, he's creating distance learning opportunities as a result of that if the children um, scan the QR code at home, for example. And I thought this was a great idea, but I said, you know, I said to him over Twitter, wouldn't it be an idea uh, to use an app like Show Me, which I mentioned already, to create your own screencast uh, to describe a grammar point? Um, and he did exactly that. So that evening, uh, on his sofa, he uh, described how to form uh, this and that in French, so a sous cette ci. And uh, again, I wrote the whole thing up uh, in the Guardian in uh, in November of 2012, and so you can check that out. But um, again, a fantastic way of using uh, a, a free app to create a screencast, make it available online, um, and via a QR code to create distance learning opportunities through screencasting. So, pretty good stuff, I think. Now, at the um, ICT and Languages Conference, which I've mentioned already, which started in 2011, is now in its fourth. Uh, um, incarnation. Uh, the hashtag for the event is ILICH, which is uh, originally standard for ICT Links into Languages Conference, and then we, we changed it to just ICT and Languages Conference, but because the, the ILICH uh, hashtag had, had got quite a lot of traction at that point, we carried on using that uh, online on Twitter. Now, again, this is a blog post by Rachel Smith talking about the idea of what do you do if you just have the one iPad in the classroom and you're a language teacher, how can you use that? And then on the right-hand side, we have the amazing Lisa Stevens, who is a, um, an Apple Distinguished Educator, who did a presentation on using iPads in the primary languages classroom. And again, all of these, these URLs, these links, you can check out in your own time. Now, on the next slide, we have another two, uh, well, sorry, another presentation. This is by Amanda Salt, who I mentioned already. And her presentation is called Apps Are Us, and she, she delivered this at um, ILILC. And also, um, interestingly, on the right-hand side there, this is a, a doc that she's created in Google Drive, which has a list of uh, lots and lots of different MFL apps or modern foreign language apps that she would recommend, um, many of which I'm sure she's heard from the MFL Twitterati and, and people like myself who've, uh, who are uh, tweeting a lot about these sorts of things. And so she has kindly put together a list of useful apps, particularly looking at apps which create content, because I'm... This is something which I've been thinking about for a long time, but certainly this was reinforced um, at the iPad Summit USA, that, that the iPad is an, is an incredible tool for creating content, for accessing higher-order thinking skills according to Bloom's taxonomy. It's not just about 
using the iPad as a consumption device, but very much as a as a collaborative device and as a creative device. And um, those people who are new to this sort of thing will find that particular list very, very useful, as well as other uh, other links, which I'm going to be sharing um, in a moment on the uh, as part of the webinar. Now, um, flipping the classroom is something which is, seems to be a very, very hot topic at the moment. And uh, I had the opportunity to see John Bergman talk about it at the uh, iPad Summit USA. And um, in in languages in the UK, um, Wilden School, which I've mentioned already, where um, uh, Miss McLaughlin works, Sadie McLaughlin works, and her department ha has been really pushing uh, the idea of flipping the classroom, flipping the languages classroom. And I think this is again an example of growth mindset and being part of a community. Because what she's been doing, not only she, has she has she been encouraging other people within her department to get on board with uh, with flipping, but also she's been inspiring other. Uh, language teachers from around the country and she's been connecting with people like Heather Witten and with Kristen Pontarelli who are uh, US um, teachers, language teachers who are leading the way in their country and this would be something that just wouldn't have been possible in the same way without I think the use of social media so you can see on the top left there we have um, uh, the Wilden blog called fliplearningmfl.blogspot.co.uk which is um, recording all the different experiments on flipping the classroom. And then you'll see other blog posts here, which have been done by people such as uh, Samantha Broom, who's the head of languages at a school in Blackpool. We've got Farid Sharadine, who works in uh, Northamptonshire, who's a languages teacher. And we have uh, Orly Charles, who is the head of languages at um, Longfield Academy in Kent. And uh, they're actually one-to-one -one in, their, in their school. And so they've been doing amazing things with iPads as well. And so the fact we can all share these ideas through blog posts is, is pretty incredible to say the least, it's, it's wonderful and then as you can see in the middle of the screen um, they've been having a Google, ha well they've been having various Google Hangouts together to discuss their ideas all together uh, in the same place so it's just absolutely incredible I think. So if you're looking for ideas on flipping the MFL classroom then this is a good place to start. Now one thing that uh, the Wilden have been doing is they've been um, creating these various videos for the children to access prior to going into the, to the lesson. So those people that don't know about flipping the classroom, essentially you do the content at home, you access the content first, and then you do all the uh, high order thinking skills, all the questioning, all the exercises in the, in the lesson itself, which, which frees up more time. So what they've been doing is they've been uh, creating the content for the children to access beforehand. They've then been creating a Google form that the children complete having watched the video, and then uh, through the results in the Google form, they can then see immediately which group to put them in. So they have three groups. I think I'm right in saying um, you have the uh, purple group, who obviously have watched the videos, have done the questions, have have clearly you know got it, have understood what it's all about, the content that they've been looking at. So they go into the purple group. That you then got the amber group, which is they've obviously watched the videos, but they they you know they they they've understood it pretty well, but they've got some work to do on it. So they'll be given a different set of exercises. And then you've got the I think red, if I remember correctly, the red group, which um, clearly haven't watched the video and then they need to access that before they can start the activities in the lesson. But that's a really really good idea, and I think that this is some of the cutting edge stuff in relation to flipping the classroom in languages uh, in the UK. Now here is uh, the next uh, few uh, URLs are some other resources from other people from around the world who are interested in iPads and languages. So this is a wiki created by Kristen Paul who works for the South Australian government uh, based in Adelaide and she is a uh, she works in the languages team there and she's put together a wonderful wiki uh, which has lots of ideas to do with languages and technology but there's a particular uh, a set of pages to do with um, how um, different apps can enhance language learning. So again, I would encourage you to have a look at that uh, because I'm sure you'll find it useful. Uh, this is a blog by Joyce Tabone, who is a language teacher from Melbourne in Australia as well. And um, she, I think she stopped writing uh, this, unfortunately, but she's written quite a few blog posts already. Um, and all the blog posts are about particular apps and saying how they could be useful in languages. So that's teaching loads, that's um, learning um, uh, English other than, sorry, l uh, languages other than English, teaching loads with iPads.wordpress.com. Okay, now this um, particular resource, this is by Catherine Uslan, who is a language teacher from the, uh, from the US, who I've met a couple of times face to face, uh, and she's absolutely lovely, and her website is incredible, and this one is to do with iOS apps for world language education. 
So again, uh, you'll find that very useful. And there are lots of authentic apps there as well. In other words, apps designed to be used by um, first language learners uh, from the target countries such as France. So definitely worth uh, having a look at as well. OK, now why not have a look at some webinars in relation to seeing how iPads are good for um, not just teaching and learning, but languages in particular. Now, you'll notice here that there are two sets of webinars. One is uh, for Tech Talk Tuesdays, which is organized by Anne Merchant, who's a secondary school teacher from Australia, and uh, Jenny Ashby, who's you know renowned as a uh, iOS expert in the use of, uh, well, sorry, uh, of an expert in the use of iOS devices to enhance teaching and learning. She gave a webinar back in 2012. Um, I gave a webinar for the same series as well in October of that year, and as I mentioned at the start of this presentation, I gave one uh, for the Classroom 2.0 Live series back in January of 2013. And if you want to watch the whole hour and 20 minute video back, then feel free to do so. It's all there. So webinars are a great place to find out about iPads, and the Classroom 2.0 webinars, if you check out the archives, there are lots and lots of them to do with iPads there. Now. It's, I think it's a very, very good idea to publish uh, the work that you've been doing on the iPads to a real audience on a channel such as YouTube. Now, this is the work of Kelda Richards, who is a uh, head of languages at Isca College in the southwest of England, and her YouTube channel is called Isca Languages, and on there you'll find lots and lots of examples of different um, uh, creative multimedia outcomes using iPads, using apps such as Morpho, uh, Puppet Pals, and, uh, and other similar um, animation apps. So again, a good a good uh, starting point to see how people can use these sorts of uh, tools in the classroom. Now, talking of authentic audiences, um, uh, Laura Knight, who I mentioned already, she was doing some work on the topic of clothes using the Screen Chomp app, and she published that to a real audience onto her blog, and she was absolutely delighted, and more importantly, her students were delighted about the fact that somebody from the company, from the Screen Chomp company, from TechSmith, um, actually put a comment onto the blog. So this is the power of publishing, publishing your work to an authentic audience, really. So again, by doing that via a blog, via a wiki, uh, it's something that the, that the students find very, very engaging. It's so easy now to do that with an iPad, so that's wonderful. Now, going back to, uh, to the um, iPad Summit USA, uh, as I said already, I was lucky enough to, to go along to that in person in Boston. Now, you'll see me on the right-hand side there next to... Uh, uh, next to Greg, and I, uh, I am actually quite tall. I'm six foot one, so Greg is, uh, is considerably taller than me. So that, that that doesn't normally happen. Normally, I'm I'm the tallest in the room. But uh, it was lovely to to meet him, and I thoroughly enjoyed his um, advanced iPad Classroom pre-conference workshop, um, and particularly his ideas on app smashing, which I know is a term that he uh, he came up with. And so, as part of that, we had to do this multimedia video app smash. And I thought it would be useful for me to sort of talk a bit about this and how this could work in languages as well as in other subjects as well. You'll notice as well that there's, that there's an EPUB file you can download and actually see the, uh, the book which I created in Book Creator um, all about my, uh, my um, video app smash adventure. So you'll notice on the next slide what I've done is I've taken a screenshot of the different um, pages in my EPUB file, and I, I uh, took the screenshots by using um, obviously print screen, but the the um, the tool I was using was Chrome. I was using the Chrome extension called Readium, which is R E A D I U M, and that allowed me to display my EPUB file in the browser, so that would work on a PC or a Mac. Um, it would allow me to display my EPUB file. So for those people that didn't know about that, it's called Readium. It's a free Chrome extension uh, for your PC or your Mac. So you don't have to just have an iPad to display your book. You can use that uh, as well. So as you can see, just going through briefly, I started off using an app called Montage, which allowed me to create up to 12 uh, second clips, uh, sorry, 12 clips, and each clip could not, not be longer than five seconds. So I shot uh, 12 sets of five second clips um, around, the, uh, around the workshop and then going into the workshop. I then used the app called Slow Pro, which let me speed up my, um, my footage because I felt it needed to be a bit quicker. So I went from five seconds to three seconds per clip. I then used the um, app called 8mm to add the Sakura filter to give it that sort of sepia feel. I then um, particularly concentrated on the um, Telegami app and, and um, the green screen effect you can have if you download 
um, a, a green screen image from Google Image Search. And this is very much um, tying in with um, a, a couple of blog posts that Greg has written, Greg uh, Kulawick has written about app smashing and uh, it was great to put this into practice. So I was able to put the green background with the Telegami avatar and then using the Doing Green Screen app on the next page, you'll notice that what I did was I then um, smashed together, as it were, superimposed the video that I'd already created in the background with the Telegami char character um, in the beginning, uh, in the forefront, shall I say. Then I used the app called Hologram to do a title slide, and then for the last um, section, I used the app called Draw and Show, um, and I literally just wrote on my, on my uh, iPad screen with my finger, thanks for watching, and then I edited the whole thing together in iMovie, uh, did a video uh, voiceover at the beginning and then an audio voiceover throughout the whole thing. And I also used Poplet to show all the apps that I, that I put together in my app smashing adventure. And you'll see here, this is a, a screenshot of the YouTube video and feel free to, to watch that. And you'll notice I've got two QR codes there on the right hand side. One of them will take you to the YouTube clip and the other one will take you to the EPUB file which you can download and open in iBooks and see um, everything that I did. Okay, now just about so just about ready to finish off with, I just wanted to finish off with uh, this particular slide, which has been created by Wes Fryer from the uh, from the US, an, an, an A-list educator, and I'm a, I'm a, a huge fan of his. Uh, in fact, uh, if you do a search for Wes Fryer and Joe Dale, you'll find an interview that we did all about how you can do uh, podcasting with um, iOS devices, so you might want to check that out. But the point of this particular slide is, is looking again, as I've mentioned already, about how um, the iPad can be used to create content, not just consume content. So if you want to uh, get your children to access high, higher order thinking skills, why not to use some of these ideas? So uh, create you know, some interactive writing, create ebooks, do podcasting, create photo stories. All of this lends itself very, very well to languages in particular, but obviously it works with other subjects as well. And on the right hand side we have two presentations from Sylvia Tolisano, who I normally mention in my presentations. Again, I'm a big fan of hers. And she's languages on Twitter. And her two presentations there are about how, again how um, iPads can transform teaching and learning in the classroom, in and out of the classroom, in fact. And again, you've got the URLs to those at the bottom of this particular slide. And there we are. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed the presentation. Uh, feel free to scan this QR code right now, which will allow you to download a PDF of my presentation. Uh, you'll notice as well I've used the tiny URL, um, uh, URL shortener service, and I've made it really, really easy. So it's just tinyurl.com forward slash etipad Joe Dell, and you can download the PDF that way as well. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen and you'd like to get in, in contact via my email, or via um, Twitter or what have you, then feel free to do so because I would I would love to uh, uh, to, to come and, and, and work in your school or, or do some training or come back to the US and do more of the same because uh, this is a, a subject area I'm absolutely passionate about and I would love to know more about your experiences so please feel free to get in touch. And with that, I think Sam, I'll, pa I'll, have, I'll hand over to you for some questions if that's okay. Absolutely. Well, that was just fantastic. I really love... Um, your sli the, the slide towards the end, especially because it brought together all of the concepts you were talking about with uh, both collaboration and with using the iPad as a tool to accomplish something, to create something, as a way of doing something. I shared in the um, uh, in the chat box as well um, a great uh, part of our website on EdTech Teacher is the iPad ads, and I love this site. I'm still pouring through it uh, just to find out all the great tools that we have listed for using iPads um, with our students so that they can just go ahead and do such great things. Um, I, I think, you know, from, from your presentation, it's just really wonderful to see how the community has come together and has been sharing and um, that you've been able to create this community. So that's just fantastic. Um, your links are wonderful. So that that was just great. We, if you didn't notice on a, the web page that has the um, the webinar as well as the chat box, right below it is this whole presentation. So you can get to it as well there. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, to put them in the chat box. We still have a few more minutes. Um, but that was just wonderful what you were sharing with us, Joe. Um, thank you so much. A lot of people were uh, excited about some of the tools that you had mentioned. 
So Thank you. But I, th I think that's the key. It's the community. It's about the community and building the community. And that has taken years to do. But now we're at this situation whereby any any topic to do with language learning, you know, in any 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 aspects of the curriculum, we can there will be some expert within the community who can then help with that. And obviously, one of the the most hot topics at the moment is to do with iPads, the flipped classroom, and it's just it's incredible the way that um, that people can get advice from absolute experts within their field within that community. And everyone is so into this growth mindset of sharing, of being positive, trying things out, experimenting, and and from that, great things can happen. I think well, are happening already. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's just, that, that's really the mindset we need to have is this growth mindset and how we can work together and how we can share our resources and really how we can, um, you know, uh, just do things better and do things that are, um, that, that make our students stronger. I love that you brought in the flipped classroom as well because I've been doing a lot of work with that. And really to me, the flipped classroom is just how can we use these tools to maximize our face-to-face -face time with our students, you know, and um, what can we pull out so that we can have resources for them to go to, and how can we share these resources so we don't all have to sit there and, you know, reinvent the wheel. We do have a question here. Um, somebody was asking, which is the best tool to create videos for the flipped classroom? So how, what, what tool might you uh, uh, yeah. show them, hand them towards? Yeah, that, I mean, that's a great, great question. And it seemed to me um, from the iPad Summit USA that there were certain uh, apps that were being mentioned again and again and again. And probably the, I'm sure you'll agree, probably the most popular app at the, uh, at the summit was Explain Everything. So I think Explain Everything seems to be um, the, the well I normally describe it as the Rolls Royce of, ex of um, screencasting apps it has all the bells and whistles it has all the, the fantastic things you can do with it the, the export options are incredible yeah. um, so probably explain everything is the best app particularly if you're looking for um, picture in picture or video in video uh, that's really really good but I think if you're if you're not willing to, to, to pay for the uh, for, for explain everything you're looking for a free equivalent I would say show me is very very good for the reasons I've described already. In other words, the way you can publish um, your your screencast um, as part of its own URL and you can make that URL private is something that you can't do in a straightforward way with Explain Everything. I know you can put it into Dropbox or Google Drive and share that via a URL, but I, I like the way that you can have it as so it's available on uh, a website and you can make it private and then share it via a QR code. I really, really like that. But I also like Screen Chomp as well, mm -hmm. which allows you to import a PDF uh, into Screen Chomp and then you can mark that and give video feedback. That's another, that, that's another uh, uh, aspect of, of a screencasting app which I like. But I think if you're looking about... Um, Flip Classroom apps, I think probably Explain Everything is, is the most obvious one to go for. If not, show me. But there's also Video Scribe, um, which some people really like. Uh, and there's also, um, it's, not, it's not an app, it's a tool called Powtoon, which I know that at Wilden School, I've mentioned already, they've been using that. And they, they did a fantastic one on, I think, if I remember correctly, the Spanish Conditional using uh, the Mission Impossible theme, which I just thought was incredible. Um, so, yeah, I think Powtoon, Explain Everything, and Show Me are probably the three most popular ways of, of flipping the classroom if you're looking at that sort of screencasting video content, I would say. Yeah, I, I would definitely say, you know, the thing with Explain Everything is I talk about, you know, apps, the power of any app that you're using to create something with is what you can pull into it. And once you make something, what you can push out and Explain Everything just gives you so many options for... Um, what you can pull into it and what you can push out. I also I love again if you know if you if you can't purchase a paid app, um, Screen Chomp is great. Is great. Uh, Show me. I also use Educreations because that gives you an embedded link as well to a video. So those are some really good choices as well. I think uh, anything that 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 gets your point across and allows you to push it out to your audience or your students in in the way that you need to get it to them is is whatever is valuable to you then. Yeah, I mean an another thing I really like about Show Me is it is actually possible to download the Show Me videos to the camera roll as well. It's not as straightforward compared to say Explain Everything but it is possible so in fact if you do a search for download videos uh, Show Me you'll find out how to do it but essentially well the way I do it is um, I, I once I've uploaded my, my video I'm, I'm, I log in 
I then click on, it says me, and that's the avatar, you click on that, you then, uh, or tap, should I say, you tap on that, you then tap it where, tap on where it says edit show me's, then on the left hand side you tap where it says show me's, and then all your videos then appear and it will say uh, edit, download, delete, yeah. you tap on, on download, it will say preparing download, and then it will turn into the word download which is underlined, and then a window will appear in the middle of the screen saying open in iMovie or open in and obviously you could save it, you could open it in iMovie and save it to the camera all that way or what I tend to do is I tend to go to open in Dropbox and then once it's in Dropbox I'll upload it to there tap on the on the uh, the little thumbnail so it appears the large thumbnail version and then tap on the export option and tap save video and then it will then export to the camera roll with the little watermark bottom right saying show me uh, and then once it's in the camera roll, you can then put it into, say, Book Creator um, to make, uh, let's say, a grammar revision guide with a lovely uh, grammar explanation of, let's say, the perfect tense. I know I've mentioned that a few times, but I think um, being able to download it to the camera roll uh, with a free app like Show Me and then put it into, say, Book Creator is just a great way of combining different types of multimedia into uh, into a book for, for, again, for app smashing. I think uh, that mm. Book Creator... Uh, Thing Link, um, iMovie are are great um, uh, ways of of, uh, of uh, pulling together ideas all in the same place uh, as an example of app smashing, and and also as well I think the MFL Twitter art, the whole sort of the idea of the of the redefinition level mm -hmm. of um, of the salmon model, I think that there there there, t there seems to be like um, an aspect of global collaboration or, or being part of a global community or publishing to a real audience all these sorts of things, but I think that mashing things up with a global community and having something like the MFL Twitter RT or something equivalent is, is absolutely the way we need to go. So if we're going to be teaching above the line, I know that's an expression we've, that's I've heard a few times, teaching above the line, hitting those modification levels, uh, um, so the, uh, the um, yeah, modification level, the redefinition level, we need to have these sorts of glo global communities to draw and to be able to achieve those. I don't know if you agree with me, but I, I feel oh. that very strongly. Absolutely. In fact, it's the communities that make us strong. You know, it's great to say, I have a favorite tool, but to share what you did with it, how you used it, what your thinking was, absolutely. It's always um, more powerful to be able to share, get feedback, and really just develop your um, your your uh, abilities and what you do for, with your students and be able to grow together as a community. It's very important. We have one last question. Any great new apps for digital storytelling? Um, so did you want to chime in for that? or? Absolutely. I mean, I, I've done presentations in the past on digital storytelling. It depends if you mean digital storytelling with video, with audio, etc. Um, let me let me just give me two seconds. I've got a, I think I've got a, on a let me, just give me two seconds and I'll, I'll, I'll um, read out a few. I know off the top of my head there's a really uh, good one for audio uh, called, um, hang on, just give me a second, called um, Keezy, which is K-E-E-Z-Y. And what it lets you do, it lets you create a soundboard mm -hmm. of, um, for different, like, um, uh, like different carts, if you like, with audio attached that you can then re you can record the audio for each individual cart. You can have up to eight carts um, on the page. And what that lets you do is then, for digital storytelling, you could then um, you can then play those different sounds while you're recording your audio, if that makes sense. Can you spell that again? Um, okay. uh, so it's called Keezy, K-E-E-Z-Y. That's a really good one. And there's also, if you're into uh, audio podcasting, there's one called Boss Jock Studio, hmm. which again uh, is B O O B O S S J O C K Boss Jock Studio, and that lets you com combine again different carts together. And when you tap on the different carts, you can play those as a, uh, as they are or loop them. And when you press the microphone, it will duck the music or the sound effect underneath the audio, which is really, really nice. Like you can, with, like you used to be able to do with GarageBand on the Mac, where you still can, I think. I'm not sure. So that that's good for audio. I've just got my presentation in front of me now. Let's have a look. Right, so for, um, uh, for still images, to create a narrated slideshow with still images, I'd recommend 30 hands, which yeah. is three zero hands, as in your hands. Th 30 hands. Yeah, is, yeah. I love 30 still. hands. Um, let's have a quick look through. Um, just give me a second. Right. I also love. I have to mention that my new favorite after telegami, of course, is yep. Chatter Kids. 
Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, talking of that, there's, there is Chatter Kids, but there's also one called Yakit Kids. And yakit. My... I love Yakit Kids. So in in, in yeah. workshops and what have you, I'll take a picture of two static static objects, and then add the eyes and the mouth to each one, and then do a little pair work dialogue. So again, you could put that into a, into a book and bring your your text to life, but which is lang in languages is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, my my son just did a whole project on having the um, mathematical symbol pi talking using Yakit and stringing together different facts about pi. So, <laughs> awesome, awesome. So we actually need to wrap it up. That's um, fine. It has been so wonderful that all of you could join us. Um, if you enjoyed this webinar, I certainly did. Joe, thank you so much. It was just fantastic um, having you with us. If you enjoyed this webinar, please uh, know that there are other opportunities where you can join us. We both have we have more webinars this spring, lots of really great ones coming up on gaming and all sorts of wonderful topics. And uh, this summer we have workshops all over the country. I know I'm going to be over in Cambridge and Chicago, at least if not at some of the other ones, but there's some fantastic topics all around the country. So we hope you can join us for one of those. And then really exciting this summer in Chicago, we have uh, Leading Future Learning. We have our guest speakers of Will Richardson and Jenny McGarra. And again, it's just another opportunity for us as professionals to get together, to work together, and to uh, move our profession forward. So again, thank you so much for joining us, Joe. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure working with you. And uh, with that, we're going to say farewell. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being part of it. And uh, I'd love to do some more uh, things with EdTech Teacher. So thank you for inviting me. It's been wonderful. Sounds great. All right.